All right, what's good, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode of SCG Weekly, episode 189. It could be weekly or it could be bi-weekly. Um, we're getting close to one of those things, and maybe we're not at the same time. But this time, we're checking out Daytona Twin B, and um, man, I can't even remember if we covered another Twin B game. Can you, Maximo? Uh, I think <laughs> this might have been briefly mentioned in some sort of like cute em up showcase a long, long time ago before I was even yeah. a part of the show. But, but that's th like, right? Not as a standalone, I think. Not standalone, yeah. I don't think we've had any standalone episodes on uh, Twin B games, but it is uh, one of those series, one of those very popular series, kind of in that era of uh, the original cute em ups if you will, with uh, the original arcade game by Konami, and then uh, Daytona here would be the arcade sequel. Um, but they'd have like some Famicom games in between and stuff like that. But anywho, we are joined by Refki. What's up, Refki? Hi. How's yeah. everyone doing today? I'm doing pretty so, good. So, yeah, I'm Refki from South Korea. Uh, I've been playing Shmups since 2018. Uh, starting with the cave games with just the one all clear, then eventually I got a little more interested in the Konami games. So I played Gradius series, then then 60 Parodius, then yeah, then later on I actually got into Tetana 2MB. So the main reason why I got very interested in the Tetana 2MB is that the, um, well, there's a lot of story I hear about the game, you know how the game actually ends with the second loop. So and then the game is also widely considered as one of the very hard, very difficult game to clear. So, and then apparently some people tried it, but pretty much gave up for some reason. So I just, it was very curiosity kind of thing. But then when I actually got to play it, it really was really fun game to play. Of course it was really difficult, but most importantly, it was really the one of the most fun game I've ever got to play. So at this point, it it is my favorite game by at this point. So yeah, I'm still con continue playing the game, and it's gonna be we're gonna be watching the um two replays. So this uh, the one that I played is a non-automatic fires category, and the other one is a au automatic fire uh, category. Uh, I think. I believe that's what we got lined up here. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, I mean. I'm looking forward to this because I really don't know what the second loop is like and I really don't know how hard this is going to get and look and how easy you're going to make it look at the same time. I'll have to see how this goes. Yeah. And so we'll be starting with your replay, mm -hmm. which is the non-auto fire. And then uh, we'll go to Koizumi. The world art gameplay. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be a world record auto fire scoring replay. And both of the runs are about an hour long. So we're not going to spend too much longer in the intro here, as we'll have likely ample time to uh, comment about the flying teacups and all those various mm -hmm. things in the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like cute look looking things is actually killing you. <laughs> I'm drinking tea, so I'm ready for the teacups. <laughs> It's, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I mean, so, go, one go thing ahead. I have to mention is that the um, so all of the replays is actually played on the actual game center, um, not a uh, the um Mame or anything uh, console console port or anything like that. All of it was played in default setting. Those are normal difficulty with just the three life, three lives. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Some authentic gameplay. That's what I like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's uh, begin uh, these replays, shall we, and uh, get into uh, kind of what Twinbee is all about. All right. Cool. We'll start the first video from zero. <laughs> as, uh, as one is apt to do. And I'll count us down. Uh, I think we're ready to go here, so three, two, one, go. Alright, so this is a Detana Twin B, uh, made in two, uh, 1991, second game of the arcade series. 
Uh, it was actually very well received at the time. Oh, but um, well, it was also the time when the fighting game showing up, so it wasn't that popular. So that's the only thing I can say about the reception in in, in general. Okay, wait, why is video running really fast? Uh, um, yeah, that playback speed is too fast. Yeah, it's it's kind of been a little weird. The video is just just playing too fast. I, yeah, this is kind of weird. Uh, Wait, hold Did on. Did you actually let's, change let's, the setting? Yeah. Wait, let's pause this. What's going on here? Hold on. <laughs> Technical difficulty. <laughs> sorry, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I noticed it like right from the start. What? Wait, wait a second. Yeah, this isn't the that... high speed. <laughs> Why also, is it say duck station? Extra mode. <laughs> you have it from the race storm episode from last time. Oh. Okay, 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 yeah, no, that's 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 right, I have that text there, but why is the video still fast? Uh check playback speed, is it normal? Yeah, I think the playback speed isn't particularly normal it looks like. Yeah. Could you actually check about this? Oh wait, okay, this is way too slow, okay. Okay, while we are waiting on this uh, video play thing, um, I can just go ahead and explain thing about the uh, the bell how the bell system works in this game. So sure. I think many of you probably play the um the NES version of the Twinbee, and then the the actually the bell system is very different from the arcade series and NES one. Not just only for the colors, but also the the way that the color cycle. So the bell color. Uh, it basically the bell color cycle ordered by this color. So it goes with white, white one, then blue one, green, red, purple, and then the black. So white one is basically gives you a two linear shot. The blue is a speed ups. The green is the shadow clone option that gives you the extra shots. And then the red one is the normal barrier. And the purple is the shadow clone with the shield property, also known as the tail barrier. Uh, so both of the video will gonna be using the purple bell instead of the red one because that's the um the best best option to use in this game and then there's a black one which you do not want to grab but if you actually accidentally grab the um too much too many speed ups you can just like reduce it down just so the you, know, you can just control the rank or kind of kind of thing okay um i think we got we got the situation sorted okay, okay. Cool. um so i think it was just playing fast on my end um, and I okay. checked the playback speed and it was said normal, but then I like reloaded the video or something and now it's good, I think. Okay. So, all right. All right. Yeah. So sorry about that. Nah, no, no, no problem. All right. I think shall... the bell system is a kind of bit complicated, so it's just kind of good that I can just explain. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's, let's try again though. So right. here, here comes the countdown. Yeah. Three, all right. two, one, go. Okay, so as I was saying, so the bell color is basically just a different from the NES one. But what I also mentioned is that cycle is also different. So what I actually mean by that is that the um so NES version usually cycles by individually, and then the arcade series actually cycles entirely. Like you just saw there, like when I actually grab the white bell, the next bell that I hit five times, then I I get the um the blue bell on next. Like on the on the NES one, if you actually like hit the five uh, five hits on the bell, uh, the bell that you just spawn, then it always start with the blue. So that's the one that you have to keep in mind. So right now I think I got the um blue one, and then the white one, and then the tail barrier. And then the green one that it actually have more extra shots for the option. Yeah, then I got the um the extra blue one. So at this point it's just the two speed ups, options, then the tail barrier, and then white white bell. And then the last thing I wanna get is that the um the spread shot. That one doesn't come up, come up from the um the regular bells. That one is actually um coming from the ground enemy so I have to keep on take out the ground enemy and hopefully I get the um bell shaped icon and if I grab it grab it then I get the um fresh mm -hmm. shot and from there I want to just keep on maintain my power because the thing about this game is that the game doesn't even have a score extend bonus at all 
So you basically do not want to lose a life at all. Yeah, harsh. Yeah, very harsh game. But, but you can take hits on the on your arms, can you not? Yeah. yeah, you can. But then you have to be very precise about it. Like if you got hit on the other, either like back of your ship or the very front of the ship, you still just lose a life instantly. I do really like that feature, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that actually basically makes the uh, shit hit hitbox like even bigger. Mm. I think there's a famous um, the image video showing that um, he the ship didn't got hit by the bullet, but still counted as a hit, and it just dies. Mm. Right. <laughs> Classic. So yeah, this is the um. Let's see, what else do I have here? Mm. Yeah, basically you want to hit a five times of the bell to actually change the color. So that's the first thing you have to kind of remember. And then you also have this uh, point blanking on the cloud, so you can grab the bells without even like having to bouncing around too much. So that's the one thing you can do in this game. See, that's the best best and then the worst because oh there's the belt item that I can grab. So that's the spread shot I can use. Yeah, there you go. So you have to keep on track of the bell cycles. So let's say you like keep on doing the point blanking the clouds and then keep trying to grab the yellow belt to score uh trying to score. But sometimes you can get the uh, black bells or blue or white bells like kinda randomly. Well not really random. But uh, you can just like grab these items and then screw yourself. So you have to kind of keep on track of which color are you in, kind of thing. Like if you're mashing the button too much or something like that. No. Okay. So let's say you're on the. So you saw the you saw the black bell uh, when you spawned the bell. Then you you basically trying to get the yellow bell to to just grab it and then. You keep on doing the uh, hit hitting on the cloud, then you eventually got into the blue bell because uh, it the color just keep on cycle. So you have to kind of keep on track of the um the bells. Otherwise, you, if you like point blank on the clouds, you just automatically just grab the power up and then just do it yourself. Okay, so you're, you're saying sometimes it's not all, it doesn't always start with yellow and then to blue and then to black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but tip, but typically it is kind of like that. I know it's in the series, but you're saying there's an exception here. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Sometimes it starts on black. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Because it's mainly because the NES one. If you actually spawn the bell and it hit it hit the five times, you're always gonna start with the blue. So by by individually, but mm -hmm. this game it doesn't work like that. Okay. So you have to kind of keep on like check on the like which bell are you currently on cycle so oh yeah. okay it doesn't reset like uh it doesn't reset there you, that's the word okay gotcha mm -hmm. if you're on black then you gotta get green and uh the other one to appear first mm-hmm okay but think the thing about this game though once you actually grab the powers then the same color doesn't show up the only yeah, okay. color that keep on showing up is at this point would be white bell, blue bell, and then the black bell. Yeah, you see, I just keep on juggling the bell. You don't really even see the red or green or any other color at all. So that's how this game actually works. Um, hmm. I thought we did see uh, white and green there. Or no, did we see uh, the, when you're the, juggling you, those? Basically, if I already grabbed the green, so there's not there's no gonna there's no not gonna be a green you um, only see white and point. white and blue white and blue and black oh okay and then what happens if you grab those since you already have basically power? for blue for blue you get an extra speed black you your speed is going gonna go down oh, okay black is and speed then, down gotcha mm -hmm. so the white one well since I already got the spread shot if I grab the white one at this point the spread is gone, and I, I keep the two line of the shot. Oh, so, gotcha. Power down then, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yep. at least the first loop, like, if you happen to got the, um, like, accidentally got the three speed ups or speed downs or spread or anything like that, 
It's not too bad in the first loop, but second loop, you don't want to screw yourself on this because you're definitely gonna need white shot. You're definitely gonna need two speed ups. You're definitely gonna need not to um, reduce down the speed. So there's the um, rank system in this game. Um, it doesn't really work like a Karodio series, like how like how long you survive, but rank goes up kind of thing. It's not like that. It's it's purely based off of the um, equipment base. So yeah, right now I also have this friend looking thing, the green dude attached to my ship. This is called Green Bee. So this guy is very one of the strong options to use in this game. Like it makes your power uh fire more more powerful. Even the fire char uh, charge shot is, is even gets uh, even more stronger. The issue with uh, playing it on second loop though, it makes the rank even goes up really high. So during the second loop, you will see that I'm gonna be abandoning the um this green friendship. Mm. So yeah, this is the um second stage of the game. Um, well, kind of boring stage in my opinion because. This kind of drags. <laughs> yeah, it's all it is just the kind of waiting for to trying to go down to the ship and then destroy the ship ultimately at the end. So, yeah, this part could be a pretty boring segment if you got used to it. Yeah, this is the yeah. uh, tight Taito uh, ashtray smoking moment or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you you'll see like ton of ton of this kind of kind of um, boss fight and uh, many other old school shmup. I think. Yeah. Like, even Parodius Dot has this boss battle as well. And then, of course, the famous archetype. That's the one of the... I think it's the one that actually introduced like very earlier in the shmup history, I think. So well, yeah, you know, this is yeah. the... um. This is the third stage. So I got all of my power-ups. So I'm... Oh, at this point, I'm just gonna keep on grabbing the yellow bells to try to change the score. So that's the main thing about this game uh, in terms of scoring. The yellow bell is the only only bell that gives you a score. Like if you happen to get the um, other color bell, it doesn't give you a score. So the main thing is that you don't want to drop the bell. So if if you keep on like grabbing a bell, your score multiplier will go goes up. Like it's starting from from 500, 1000, 5000, and then. 10,000 and then you want to just keep on grabbing a 10,000 bell and then if you happen to um, drop the bell you basically lose and then starting from the 500 points again so yeah so you want to just keep on um, grabbing your bell without dropping it now if you actually just completely missed out the bell by not touching the clouds at all like you, you don't really like reset to the 500 kind of thing, but you still kind of lose the score for um, missing out some of the points. But it's still better than um, uh, dropping out the bells kind of thing. So yeah, depending Makes on sense. the situation. Yeah. So yeah, this is the third stage. So uh, keep on just take out the enemy. Um, oh yeah, there's the one thing I should mention. There's the uh, one thing called charge shot. I actually, as you can see, like I can just keep on using a charge shot a lot. This is because charge shot in this game is really good. Like, basically, the charge shot pierces through like enemies, and it, it also pierces through the bell. So one, and then it it, it also has a um a lot of a range to the shot. So it makes it a lot easier to maneuver and control the bell. So yeah, you can see that I just nice. keep on using a charge shot to just keep on maneuvering bells and then grabbing the bells without having much of an issue. Yeah, there you go. Grabbing all of the bells right here. Those without auto fire, you really have to use that charge shot to juggle them too. I mean, otherwise you'd be mashing a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's the first impression when I saw the uh, many people playing this game. They don't really like understand how to use the charge shot. So they usually just trying to stick with the um the auto fire and then mm. what usually happen is that normal regular fire doesn't deal enough damage to these these enemy like these like these tank tanking looking enemies so they yeah. get ended up hit by these like, like enemies and then just uh. insta game over <laughs> well i like it it charges really fast so seems like they really yeah. do want you to use it mm-hmm also, there's the uh, one of the technique that you can use 
So very short charge shot. So if you don't really like fully charge the thing, but just like on a certain timing, you can just like use the short charge shot. That one is still a strong option. It's not probably the strong than the um, fully charged shot like it still pierced through the like small enemies and it still pierced through the um the bells so if you want to just try to give some like rapid strong damage output kind of thing you can that it's one of the options that you can definitely use oh yeah this is the um four stage yeah you can as you can see i just keep on using a charge shot and then also use the tail bear to uh blocking the um the bullets Oh yeah, that's the uh, one of the things that I have to also mention. The tail barrier, the purple bell, purple bell. Um, so if you're playing in a twin B game, you usually um, get the um, the red bells to uh, get to grab the um, regular shield. Um, for, so tail barrier is the uh, basically featured only in the Tana Twin B. There's no other game basically introduced this kind of power up at all. Uh, this is the only game you will be seeing it. So what it does is that the um you'll see this option um keep on following to the ship uh while following up following on it uh it can actually block projectiles and it, it can even kill the en enemies just as well nice so yeah for first it does, there's not that much of a bullet coming at you so you're not gonna be seeing that much using uh tail barrier oh yeah well you just saw that right there but yeah you're, you're not gonna use it that much but in second loop, you're gonna be like using a ton of ton of the tail barrier to actually block the uh, projectiles, and then. So, yeah, that's that's cool. So you have to get the green bell first, but then you get the purple bell to give you the barrier property. Is that is that mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know. About, I actually didn't know about that. So another thing about this game is that the um there's a two type of a shield item: the red one and the purple bell. So once you grab one of them, you cannot grab the other one. Unless you somehow set up to like make the bell appear the um the red one and the purple bell at the right at the same time. Yeah, if you if you grab one of them, you cannot grab another one. Right. Unless you lose lost it or Yeah. Red Bell you see so, kinda sucks. It's like such a big shield and then it just gets ate away eventually. <laughs> mm -hmm. In this game it doesn't even like even more apparent like first twin b you actually have like ton of hit points enough that you can just take some of the like hits but this game mm. it just drains away too quickly mm. so the only so only thing i'm you uh when i get to use the red bell is the only when i get to recover uh during the second loop sometimes see you also get a uh, thousand points for those formations nice mm -hmm. There's a um, Hayamawashi just as well, the the hidden formation kind of thing. So if you keep on um, keep quick killing the enemies, uh, extra enemy formation shows up. Uh, shows up, so oh, you can actually cool. just grab some of the um, board from there. Very nice. And then, yeah, this boss is also kind of a what do I say? The beginner trap kind of kind of boss. So you have to know what to do in this situation. Otherwise, you're just gonna insta game over. <laughs> So, so in this boss, the left corner is actually kind of a safe spot. So the jellyfish is not gonna strike on the very at the end of the uh, left side of the corner. So you can kind of use that safe spot to just stay there when that jellyfish is about to shoot uh, lightning. And then when he's not shooting it, then you can just use charge shot to just destroy it. Sounds so like a great tip. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is like the fifth stage. Uh, this stage isn't too bad either. Just Keep on doing the um, usual charge shot and then the use tail barrier on the fly. I think that's the one thing I really like uh, like about this game. Like, even if there's a, some kind of like intricate bullet pattern coming at you, you can still use tail barrier as much as you can. Well, even though there's a lot of ton of risk for doing it, but still. It's yeah, I'm really curious to see how you're gonna use it uh, to get out of danger later move. on. That's pretty cool. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like it's. You know, it's unorthodox. So you're gonna have to like. I'm just imagining you're gonna have to like figure it away from enemies, and it's gonna be kind of weird looking. I'm wondering how it's gonna look. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if you're using uh playing uh shmups, you're probably gonna have to eventually you're gonna have to route out the um how to dodge the certain bullet patterns and something like that. This game doesn't really particularly have like um 
specific pattern per se. Well, there's the um enemy placement kind of thing, but the revenge bullet is kind of a bit randomish, so you kind of want mm. to just sort of like improvise thing on the fly. So, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that's like the um, one of the most interesting part of the game in my opinion so far. Besides the awesome graphics and sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like the music in this game. Like, yeah. almost every track. So, uh, hmm. yeah, this segment here, uh, you can actually have this um, extra bell, like, hidden bell thingy. But then, when I actually played during this replay, I actually didn't figure it out how to trigger it. But you're gonna see it on the, um, the World Art gameplay. And then I actually even figured out later on like how to uh, trigger the um, hidden bell formation during this sixth segment. Ooh. So yeah, we're gonna see that in the, the other video. <laughs> okay, nice. Some secrets. Right, so this is, mm -hmm, it's a secret. So if you actually trigger the secret, you're gonna get extra four bells uh, right off the bat. And then you get the um, extra, ton of extra score for it. But uh, in this video, I actually missed out because Again, I didn't really figure it out how to do it at the time, but eventually I actually figured out how to do it. All right, so this is going to be the fifth boss, this um, snake looking thing. So this boss isn't particularly too difficult, but this guy kind of moves a bit randomly. So you kind of have to be kind of careful about it. Like he can just suddenly just goes up and then he can just <laughs> go anywhere. So. Uh, it's just, you, just, you, just, you just have to keep an eye on this guy's movement. Yeah, so this is the third phase. Uh, so he's gonna shoot out the orbs. You can actually destroy this by using a tail barrier or you can just use the charge shot. And you can also milk score uh, during this segment. Like, well, the, cool. the boss is still times out, but then until you time out the boss, you can just keep on um, destroying this blue orb and then just keep on getting an extra score it gives you 50 points though so it's not that much but how long do you can you do that for i think about a few one or two minute ish it's not yeah. it's not that too long from what i remember so I yeah this is yeah. the sixth stage oh go ahead yeah this is a sixth stage um for the uh first beginner player this is usually the part where difficulty spikes really spikes up really bad <laughs> Yeah, because the um, enemy placements are just out of place, and then there's a like high, uh, high speed segment that actually makes the game quite difficult. But once you actually got used to it, it's not too bad. Oh yeah, this this stage is it has it actually got the best music. It's one of my favorite oh, yeah. as well. Very emotional, and then it kind of sounds like the um very much the um, climax point of the game and it actually totally is like even the first loop the sixth stage is pretty difficult and then the second loop is just yeah it really shows that it's a game game's climax mm. like you're gonna see that in a uh, later of this video mm, let's see yeah there's a pink uh and uh, big enemies coming up i can just keep on using a charge shot to take it out yeah, these teleporting enemy kind of annoying, but these teleporting spots are, are actually fixed, so you can definitely route this out. Really and making yeah. use of that charge shot. Mm -hmm. And then here comes the um, high speed segment. Well, it doesn't look as fast as the, um, the Gradius one, but it is still kind of fast if you're actually playing it. Ooh. There's a bunch of like crystal thing coming at you. Those and then mirrors fell down enemy. fast. Yeah. After you shot them, that that looked that looked like it'd be pretty surprising the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, does it get and smacked? Then you, can, you can also take out these bad-looking thing by using a tail barrier just as well. Oh, the spike clubs oh. are back, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can take it out. <laughs> nice, nice. You can. I don't think you can destroy them in the original Twin B. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and like the yeah, whole screen is full of them. Unless you have a shield, I think, but yeah. <coughs> yeah, you might be right. You don't want to just get hit by them because you want to keep the shield. Do you get, point, right, do you get boss, points for that? Yeah, you get points okay. for that. Nice, nice. So this boss is a, is kind of kind of difficult if you're first time fighting it because 
if you pay attention to this boss, the laser doesn't doesn't go straight. It actually moves along with the boss. Like, take a look right now. Let's yeah. So the laser coming at you, and then he, he moves to the uh, oh, left yeah. side, and then the laser actually move along with it. So you have to basically you don't want to just tap tap dodging kind of thing. You want to actually move along with the boss to just keep on using a charge shot to take out the boss. Nice. Pretty that's quick. the one thing you have to know about the game. <laughs> mm. hmm. So this is the um, last stage of the first loop, uh, the stage seven. Yeah, this stage isn't that bad either, but yeah, you still want to do not want to lose the lives at all because. So if you play uh, Konami games in general, if you're starting on the second loop, your power ups and everything will reset. But this game doesn't do that. It actually keeps your power up. So you want to just keep on maintaining the power ups all the to the at the end. What's going on with this stage? Are you in like a another dimension or it's oh, just like the, the inside the, the ruins inside exploded the castle, thing. inside the castle? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Basically, there's the um, the final boss um, roaming around this this castle looking um, thing, and then you ultimately destroy this um, yeah scary looking boss, and then the the piece the the planet is restored. You know, usual typical old school video game story. You know, the yeah. princess says, says thank thank you for saving our planet. All that usual good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, the princess calls for your help in the story. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this green looking thing, you you only have to use the charge shot. If you just keep on firing at him, like he's gonna shoot a bunch of like uh, bullets. So yeah, you have to use a charge shot on that enemy. And then you can also oh, wow. kind of milk a little bit of a score by destroying the missiles. I mean, not, not much, but you, as you can see, I'm just like keep on waiting for that missile to come out and just keep on doing a charge shot. So that's the one thing you can just grab some extra score there. And then enemy coming from the left side, keep on um, be in the middle, take out the crystal by using a tail barrier. Yeah, like that. And then another green looking thing coming up and then keep on using a charge shot. And then there's gonna be a ton of bells, so you have to man maneuver. Oh yeah, that was a bit of an unfortunate accident. I actually dropped the bell at the end, so. Uh, so if you Refki, finish the what first... the hell? <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens. Sometimes that happens. Fair enough. So basically, um, yeah. Uh, as I was saying, um, wait, I don't know what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, oh, if you finish the first loop, you usually get like the, um, 2.2 million points. And then if you didn't uh, grab the white bell, you, you can actually get the 2.3, um, million points but obviously i actually go for the just the survival thing at the time so i think i'm probably gonna get the um 2.19 ish it's like very close to 2.2 million points but i mean that's because i i dropped the bell at the end <laughs> oh yeah okay very unfortunate that boss went down pretty quick too Mm -hmm. You, I yeah, guess, you just, uh, oh, go ahead. We were probably going to say, okay, I mean, uh, I was going to ask, okay. can you memorize, do you just memorize where you need to dodge for that swiping attack? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this boss is completely fixed. Okay. Cool. So what I was going to be saying is that the, uh, if you don't know how to deal with this boss, you most likely are likely going to get, get game over from here. So, yeah. But once you know it, it's not too bad. A little save state here and there will probably fix you right up. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep, yep. That's what I did, actually. <laughs> yeah. You gotta learn the cheap shots. Very nice oh, ending course, theme, too. This ending ending music is just really peaceful and then just makes me cry sometimes. <laughs> I can believe it. I, I do like the... Uh, I mean, the presentation is so good, and I, I, just, I just like these little animations of the ships here. That's very nice. Yep, yep. And, uh, now this is the only um, first loop. Like after, right. like, can you imagine? Like I play this game like almost every day in the game center, and then just keep on hearing this music during the first loop end, and then you start second loop, and then just die immediately, <laughs> and then restart again. It is very peaceful music, so yeah. Yeah. All right, so second loop is about to start. 
Konami and, likes to do that. Like the game over music in Gradius. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Alright, so as you can tell, it starts from the first stage, and then the background actually kind of changed. It's kind of looked like pinky-ish oh, nice. ish background. Yeah, it does that. And then, as you can see, the second loop is very, very nightmarish because you get to see a bunch of a ton of revenge bullet coming flying at you. And yeah, and then you have to you have to use this tail barrier to actually block some of them, and then able to like. Avoid the um, potential danger. Yeah, it's a altogether. big difference. There's a lot of them, and they're slow, and the hitboxes are big, so automatic uh, hazard there. And there's the um, extra enemy formations too. So it's it's not definitely not the mm. exactly the same as the uh, first loop. Like there's a, like additional enemy formation coming up. Nice. Oh yeah, nice. this grave looking thing. These guy also shoots the revenge bullet just as well. Ooh. So you're definitely gonna use this specific route that you're gonna need Damn, so yeah, yeah. Just, just, just like that yeah that got pretty hairy right away yeah mm-hmm yeah if you happen to got to that point you're probably gonna die or, or maybe i should say berry <laughs> all right yep. i'm sorry <laughs> yeah berry <laughs> okay yeah that, yeah as you can saw i just erased the bullet by using it and let's see yeah, also the enemy movements are, are actually also getting faster as well, so you have to actually need to be able to uh, completely be aware of what's coming at you. Otherwise, like, your shot's not gonna be um, hitting the enemies, and then hit, and the enemy will hit you. And you, if you happen to die in this game, you definitely lose all the life. And then, oh, I mean, no, the, all the power-ups, my bad. Uh, yeah, you're, you're gonna lose all the power-ups. And then the, since the game isn't checkpoint-based, you basically just revive from at this point, but you don't really have any screen clearing bomb to save you. So if you happen to die in a place where there's a bunch of enemy flying at you, you it's pretty much game over. I, I don't think they give you many iframes, do they, either? Like, only like <laughs> one or two seconds. That's, that's okay, about yeah. it. <laughs> well, the, 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 yeah, the, like, the thing is always getting uh, that first speed up because Twin B games, no speed seems always bad. Yeah, also you have to, if you're trying to grab the power up, you have to hit the clouds to get the spawn of Bell. And unfortunately, mm. Bell doesn't show up like every second. Sometimes yeah. it, it happens in a later part of the stage or something like that. Especially second loop, there's an art stage where the Bell almost doesn't exist. So you have to be very careful with the not to lose um, any power up kind of thing. It's like, okay, don't, just whatever you do, don't die here. Crap, I died yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, then, then you're in the game over. So, I know, like, ton of people talk about how Gradius 3 is one of the hard game ever made kind of thing. I played Gradius 3, yeah, so it's it's very challenging game as well. But the major difference between this game and Gradius 3 is that at least Gradius 3, if you if you die in a game, you pretty much revival to the, um, the fixed bot which is also known as a checkpoint you can basically make a route to actually revive yourself but this game doesn't have any of that actually that's the yeah. that's the biggest problem yeah big difference so, i mean and then plus no extra lives mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you're gonna lose those lives probably in the bad spot yeah. all of them <laughs> like if you happen to die in the game you, you're mostly like gonna get game over in a less than 10 seconds I mean, unless you're lucky enough to able to um, revive yourself from a this en uh, dangerous enemy, and then just able to grab a power up while enemies just keep on flying at you, and then also plus the revenge bullet. Yeah. Also, the thing about this revenge bullet is that the um, if you take out the ground enemy, the revenge bullet also comes out, but it doesn't comes out right off the bat. It actually has some bit of a delay there, making you think that. Oh, it's actually safe to move around, and then, but nope, Revenge uh, Bullet just shows up right in front of you, and it just kills you. Yeah, it's like after the explosion animation. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, man, yeah. I think that's what happened to the uh, one of the replay I saw. I think uh, I saw the Jamer's video, and then that's what actually happened to him during the this stage specifically. That's kind of dirty, but... It's the it's the it's the game rules, so you just learn the rules, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then um, there are some games that the um, the revenge bullets are somewhat consistent. Like 
the direction of the uh, revenge bullet are kind of cons consistent. Kind of like uh, yeah. V5 from a uh, 12 plan. That game actually usually had like consistent uh, revenge bullet. This game doesn't do that actually. It has that weird like randomish um, revenge bullet coming at you. It can be like very widespread and it can be just straight line. So I think that's kind of how they did it in uh, the Gradius games, you know? Mm -hmm. Pretty similar. Also, um, Parodius game, I think. So. Yeah. I like the revenge bolts and the, the the Konami style. Like it's it's an, it, you know they they are pretty random, but it, it's exciting, you know. Yeah, I think that's the uh, most exciting part about the Konami series. Like if we we can we we can just talk about uh, how bad the Gradius Three is, but in reality, in Japan, there's a ton of people just still playing Gradius Three for many why? reasons. It's like why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, there are I'm many kidding, reasons but... to it, but, but one of the things I can say is that the game also gives you a ton of options. You know how like yeah. power up configuration. Yeah, that's true. The, Ooh, nice the uh, section is, there. Mm -hmm, also, the game is very heavily route-based game, but at the same time, there's a like bit of an RNG there, so it makes you kind of laugh at the game instead of. Oh, the game is bad. Oh, it's just too pain painful to play kind of thing. Well, I think some people are kind of feeling like that, but at least in Japan, from what I saw, they just pretty much enjoying dying in the game, especially um, cube stage, like cube RNG just killing you and Man. instantly. And then people be like, what just happened? Oh my gosh, this is so funny. And then they just keep on enjoying it. <laughs> I think um, I'm kind yeah. of the same in that regard. One question from chat, um, they're asking if revenge bullets appear even if you're extremely close to the enemy when you destroy them. So I'm guessing he's asking if there's any bullet ceiling for revenge bullets in second level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, since I have the um, tail barrier, uh, I actually using this tail barrier to uh, block out the um, revenge bullet uh, in a like close range. So that way I don't have to um, worry about revenge bullet just being um, scatter all over the place and then just make my route screwed up kind of thing. Okay. So, the, so the answer is there is no bullet ceiling, but you're sealing with the tail barrier. Yeah. Ooh, fast bullets suddenly. Mm-hmm. These guys. That's pretty, that was the fastest bullets in the whole game so far. That, that's pretty, that's just a slap yeah. in the face. That's just Konami being like, give me your, give me that dollar. So... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, there, there. So in the second the bosses, there are some extra um, bullet pattern kind of thing. But once you know it, it's not too bad. The boss in the second loop is not too bad. But again, you do not want to lose life at all. Yeah, imagine dying here. I mean, you probably have to do another pass, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, you're still gonna have to grab a bells and then. Well, you, you, you're trying to grab a bell while ton of enemy flying at you, and then but if you shoot out the enemy accidentally, then you're not shooting a bell, you're shooting an enemy, and then you get ton of revenge bullets flying at you, and then you have no speed ups, and you're just gonna get hit by the thing and just dies quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I know we got so, yeah. a tangent with Gradius 3, I know that's a game uh, you played a lot of too. So, mm -hmm. just uh, mm -hmm. fill in the viewers a little bit about that. <laughs> yep. But, oh yeah. Yeah. It, you just saw that I grabbed the um the black bell on, during this segment. That's because I got I actually accidentally got the blue bells um during the I think previous stages. Okay. So like I said, um this game actually has a rank system, and then if you grab a two speed up, it it's not too bad. But if you actually got three speed up, the rank actually goes higher up. So. And then if you mm. if your rank just goes up too bad, then uh, the enemy moves too fast. So okay, so yeah, if your the, enemy the sweet spot is fully powered up in two speeds. Okay. Mhm. Mm that, yeah, that's the general know. um golden standard of how to tool this game kind of thing. Good to know. Also, don't grab the um green bee during the second loop. Okay. That also jacks up the rank it just as well. Good tip. Good tip. Mhm. Mm so yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the third stage. This is one of the stage that difficulty kind of spikes up quite a bit. Also, since 2-4 is really, really nightmare in, this, in, in the second loop, 
you definitely do not want to die here at all. So yeah, I just keep on doing um usual thing, but yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of a bell coming up, and I think I I think I grab all of it in this 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 video. I think. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I got all the bells from here. This moment is actually kind of the, one of the very um exhilarating moment because you're just trying to grab every bell while a ton of enemy flying at you. Very exciting moment. I mean, you got to be making it look a little bit easier than it is here <laughs> due to your due to your <laughs> yeah. practice, but. Yeah. yeah I, I have a feeling that, yeah, if, if I were to try it, like if I loaded a safe state, I probably would just die within like 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this this part is the uh, one of the very tricky part because a bunch of pink formation enemy coming up. This, yeah, uh, luckily I actually grab a star from here. So I was able to take out the few enemies from here. So, so star actually one of the items that you can uh, grab if you take out the ground enemy and then it's very much equivalent to the bombs in a most of shmup but it doesn't always show up it it basically uh, shows up by the uh, rng so it's very like the ground enemy items are pretty much rng so. okay um one other question from chat um how long would you say it took to get the two all uh so first two all it took me like seven months to actually got the first two all. That's yeah, a long it's, time. it's quite a while actually. It yeah. is a long time. Mm hmm I think the um the current world art player, uh, world record player, he took six months to get the first clear. And then even the the one of the guy who actually played the game uh during the 90, he also said he took seven months to clear the first two all. So by this game's player's uh, standard is pretty much, um, I think, well, not, a I would say average, but kind of fast still in this regard, so, yeah. It's, it's still kind of long, but in this game's standard, it's still pretty fast. Yeah, I really like the um, mechanic of the tail barrier. That's, I mean, it's kind of like you're using Gradius options to defend. But they're mm -hmm. not Gradius options at the same time. Like, I don't think I've really, I mean, uh, the ma seen a game yeah, that the ma quite uses the same kind of dynamic with the with the, with the option trails. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one thing I also difference between the um, Gradius game is that the uh, the options in Gradius, they, st they still stay there. Like, even if you're um, stop <clears throat> moving. Yeah, but this game, you up. have to constantly gonna keep on moving. Otherwise, if you just stay there, the the option doesn't show up. I suppose that is a gonna... big factor too, because you gotta know where you can wiggle around and whatnot. Mhm. Mm yeah. Even more space management. Mhm. Mm and then keep Ooh. on a, a ton of more maneuverization, Ooh. I think. See, it looks like there, like you just didn't shoot a lot of those enemies because you knew it would screw you over. Yeah. Yeah. This stage is actually one of the very um, hardest stage ever made. A bunch of like tank enemy uh, these UFO looking um, enemy they actually teleport right in front of you if you actually oh. went too far away from them so that's the one thing you have to keep in mind they got those cute little pinball flappers <laughs> 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 also these 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 green tank enemy is yeah, also man. yeah there's there's ton of them so you have to be careful with where you where you're going otherwise you won't be able to just take out all of them and then just get hit by them. <laughs> it is kind of right, brutal, so this but is... it looks fun. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah, if you actually have, like, if, if you keep on wondering about how hard this game is, then, yeah, best answer for you is just keep, uh, actually get, you know, play the game for yourself. See, <laughs> you, you'll see it. Yeah. Boy, by just looking up it, it's not, it doesn't look too bad, but, yeah, if you're playing the game for yourself, you, you'll see what, the, what why is this game is so rough. It really is like that sometimes, like, just watch Mogler play Ketsui, it makes you think you can do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> that's, no a, way. that's a, that's a, that's a shmups in general. Like, yeah, if yeah, just, true, true. Someone, someone, someone actually playing do really well, and then you're seeing it, it's like, wow, this guy's just doing well, uh, so what's the really hard about this game? And then when you actually get to play it, 
Yeah, a <laughs> bunch of enemies <laughs> just crack crushing on you, and then wait, this is not what I expected. And just you know, well, it's, it's, that's what usually happens. Yeah, it, it's crazy how much practice can you know um, mainstream like a lot of the difficulty of a game. Mm-hmm. I, I think. So it's yeah, again, cool. this this stage you don't want to lose um, power ups at all because of this. This enemy flying at you from the bat. Oh, what the fuck, yeah. that intro. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, if you actually happen to lose uh, power-ups during the 2-4, yeah, you're not gonna make this. You're not gonna uh, pass through these enemies. No. that was messed up. <laughs> yeah, even more messed up is coming. These bats coming at you, and then uh, more of these stingery-looking enemies just keep on flying and spamming uh, on you. You, you've, <laughs> you. You've now reverted to actual tap dodging. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah, the oh. arms. <laughs> and then the, these enemy could possibly come in up right at the start and then just... Yeah, luckily I'm actually able to survive from here. Yeah, if you actually watch the um the scoring video, he doing he did really good job of take, uh, taking out these pink enemies. So, yeah. We're gonna be seeing that later too. But um, yeah, so far I actually just... I kind of screwed up not able to take out the pink enemy at the start, so... I just using the um the tap dodging thing. Well, the threats are so fast and the enemy formation so quick. I could see that optimizing a record on this would be pretty difficult. You really had to ha have that routing down. Yeah. Looks like. So, so in nutshell, this game is like you need to know how to route this game, but it doesn't always work like how you intended. So. Like even the world uh, world record player, he actually played on the during the uh, live play on the Hay Game Center, and then he accidentally died in the two five, and it just insta game over just as well. Oh, so, <laughs> well, at least he actually succeeded during the um, what's that um, Daytona Game Center, Daytona three, mm -hmm. uh, one of the famous uh, Japanese game center. But then uh, I heard the news about the the Daytona three uh, shutting down in a end of the March, which is yeah. kind of sad. Damn, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Also, Koizumi is one of the players from the uh, Daytona as well, so I don't know what's what's uh, what yeah what's up to him kind of thing after the um, end of the game center. Just find another oh, yeah. one, I guess. Probably, but we'll see. So yeah, um, yeah, I made up, uh, managed to able to survive two five. And again, you really, really do not want to lose power up here. Like, no, just don't, don't lose it. And oh, then man. this guy, as you can see, this laser shot has got even more wider. So you have to be very careful. Mm. Like first, be, he only shoots like two, three way or something like that, but. This time he shoots like five or six ways. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, but oh, thankfully no. you can you can block it by the um tail ba pa uh, tail barrier. So. Do you know when he's gonna shoot? Like by uh, rhythm or can you just yeah? Get there's a timing over? to this. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's there's a timing to this. So nice. you, yeah, you can just, just sort of sort of rhythm it out. Oh yeah, and then you can just milk from the score from here. But at this point, at the replay video, I was like too anxious <laughs> so i'm like no i'm not gonna milk this i'm just gonna beat this game and then just call it a day <laughs> it do be like right, that uh, you just gotta like suck it up and just be like all right uh, i just i'll i guess i'll just yeah. not get that score <laughs> especially if you're on pb pace already <laughs> yeah already a pb pace so yeah this is okay so First loop of the sixth stage is also already kind of difficult, but this this yeah second loop of the sixth stage is pretty much takes it you know on another level. Damn. Yeah, a bunch of yeah, a bunch of more revenge, oh. revenge bullet, and then it looks like you ate that yeah. one bullet. Yeah, <laughs> and then just these faster moving dish enemies that keep flying at you, and then yep. And then I think the tank enemy got even more um, tankier, so you have to uh, be careful with the like when to use charge shot. So yeah, so there's gonna be a like high speed segment coming up kind of soon, but that's the that's the climax of the, this game. All 
All right, so the high uh, high speed segment is coming up. Bunch of revenge bullet coming in. Uh, still doing okay. Oh shit! Nice. Yeah, more teleporting enemies. Yeah, you have to you have to take out as soon as possible. Otherwise, these teleporting enemies will just screw you up really bad. All right, so now time for the high speed. That's the point where I'll, I'll be like, yeah, screaming out during the game center. <laughs> I'm like. Oh my gosh! Oh, save me! I I, I want to survive though. Did you have this? Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Even so this crystal crazy. enemy keep on shooting at you, <laughs> shooting it, and then that's pretty hectic. Yeah, yeah. This part I I die a lot. Like there are a lot of I think I actually tore this game like thirteen times at this point. The only time I actually survived this segment it was like two of the replays I think. Oh man. Yeah, oh this one you can you can definitely score, but at this point I'm like, no, so you, I'm done. So I'm... you do recoveries here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there, there were some recoveries from the other replays, but then what I meant what I was meant to say that was the uh the only two video that I, I actually able to survive that segment without actually um, losing a life kind of thing. So yeah. Very nice. Also, this boss is also get even faster. He shoots laser faster and he moves a lot more faster. So it's mm. kind of a little tricky. But thankfully, you can kind of die in this segment because um, you, you have like ton of bells uh, coming up in the 2-7. So you can actually definitely recover from here. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, at least that's the only nice thing about this game. You can recover from the hardest section of the game. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> One small yeah. bit of mercy from Konami. Mhm. Mm yeah, this stage itself isn't too bad either. Uh, there's still gonna be a ton of like revenge bully coming up, coming at you, and then the enemy mov movements are still fast, so you still want to kind of able to take out the enemies quite well and then able to um, erase the revenge bullet all the at the end. I think the um like mid end segment is probably probably the one of the trickiest part, but if you actually pass that it, you're all pretty much good to go. So a bunch of bell floating around and then keep on Man. just shooting. <laughs> that mid boss. Yeah you can mm -hmm. Uh, I dropped the bell. I think, well, I almost able to got the 4 million points on this video, but since I missed out a few of the bells, I wasn't able to get it. So, at that time, I actually felt quite sad, but it was still satisfying because it was still a PB at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Mm hmm. Alright, so. Yeah, even the two seven stages, you can see the um the background color has has also changed. Like the first loop is actually um was a light green background, and this one is like kind of a bluish color. Like these few changes are actually kind of nice. Oh yeah, this part is actually a bit tricky because you get this extra pink looking enemy coming at you, and then a bunch of warm um looking things just coming at you from the sides. And then these blue thing is even more tankier than usual. And then these crystal thing keep keep shooting at the, uh, keep shooting on you if you actually happen to shoot on them. But I I pass all of it, so yeah, it's it's good at this point. So very last segment of the final stage. So yeah, just keep on blocking this. Yeah, I see I see you often do that blocking tap back motion. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Looks very deliberate the way you block those. Uh, Sound shock waves or whatever. Mhm. Mm that charge shot thingy from the the black guy. Uh, yeah, you cannot block that one though. But oh. yeah, other one you can you can you can block. So okay. just keep an eye on this the black enemy. So using a charge shot at you. So yep, the final boss. He isn't any different at all. So just pretty much learn the where this pink meatballish looking thing coming at you and then just avoid them keep on using charge shot then you're pretty much good to go yep not bad so yeah that was the um, end of the 
my run of the Tana Twin B two all. Seven months of practicing, got the first two all, and then yeah, that that was still one of the happiest day I've ever. So that was <laughs> that was your first two all. Uh, this video. This yeah. No, not this one is not the first one. The okay. first one actually um didn't actually record the video. So, okay. And this one is my PB. Uh, but you, that you, actually happened okay. during the uh, last year of uh, sometimes last year, I think. Yeah. Okay. Not too long ago. Very, very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, GG. That was a fun one, fun run to watch. Thank you. Yeah, this game is also one of the games that um, not that many people has played kind of thing. Even in Japan, I only see a few of the people actually uh, boring and then there are a few people out there trying to clear the game, but then they didn't really make any progress since then. So I really hope they they actually able to to all the game and then, you know, celebrate happily and then <laughs> move on to other game or probably just I mean, if you like the game and keep on scoring kind of thing. I mean, that's usually what happens, like people just trying to get to the um, one of the hardest game ever made and then just clear the game and then they'd be very happy about it and just move on to other games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, depends on the game. I mean, I that second loop did look like it had some, uh, yeah, some real finesse to it. So I could see people get into it a bit. I'm interested mm -hmm. anyway. So yeah, nice this is the end of the loop. Yeah, if after the uh, ending credits, then you get to um, write out your initials, and yeah, and you actually yeah, the game actually ends here. It's not like a older Konami game when the loops are just infinitely keep on going until you got the game over. Yeah, that's true. I f I think a lot of their stuff like at this time period was transitioning into two loop stuff outside of like white gradius four five mm -hmm. yeah because uh i i think i read the story about the um uh, japanese arcades back then so originally there's uh the idea was that the paid less money and then keep on playing how long you can kind of thing was a trend so gradius was very popular at the time but at a certain point of 90 like there were more arcade games that actually uh, play for a shorter time. Kind of, kind of games were more pop, uh, getting popular. So Konami was uh, into a consideration of making those kind of games, but it wasn't particularly that easier for them to implement it right up, off the bat. Mm -hmm. So they, the first game they actually ever did the um, two all finished kind of game was called Parodius Da, I think. That was the one of the. Uh, early game they did the implemented the two all end mm. kind of game. Mm -hmm. Also, that's the one of right. the game that is also um, very difficult game to clear. I haven't really actually played Parodio Spot uh, by any chance, but yeah, from from look of it, it looks really difficult for me as well. So, <laughs> man, that is yeah. just, that is just some peak Konami gaming going on there. Mm-hmm. Well, we do have another replay here um, by Koizumi. Yeah. And this one has auto fire. Uh, would you like to preface it with anything else before we jump into it? Mm, not much, I think. Another, I mean, uh, <clears throat> another uh, PCB footage run. Nah, I think. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've had anything um, other okay. than. Um, this world are uh, world record played by the um, Koizumi. Uh, as for the Koizumi himself, he is actually the current uh, world record player in the both uh, auto fire and the non auto fire category. The thing with uh, non auto fire category, he doesn't have the videos about it. He only have the photos about it. But yeah, he, he got verified, and then on the oh, Japanese sweet. um associate record thingy, yeah, he he's definitely on yeah, it. What's it called? Um, J H A. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like J H A. Yeah. Is that one where you have to uh, clear the game to, to get your score in there? Yeah. Uh, also, you have to play it on a Japanese game center, so it's a pretty much Japan only kind of thing. Or go to Japan. 
Yeah, you go to Japan and then get the <laughs> highest score in the game center, and then you submit the form to the Japanese High School Association. Then your name is gonna be up there. That's cool. Uh, I think yes. uh, I had a one of the friends in Korea named Kayar. He he plays uh, Sai Daiojo, and then he went to the Japanese arcade game center, and then he got the uh, world record score, and then he submit that, and then his his name shown up uh, in the. JHA, which is pretty cool, I think. Very nice. No, no gatekeeping going on there. <laughs> but the uh, most important thing is, I mean, even if you're not part of the JHA kind of thing, like if you just keep on getting in like high score kind of stuff, just let the people know. Then yeah, you know, people will just will just you know recognize your gameplay, and then people are gonna be like you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, nowadays we, you know, got YouTube and Twitter and mm -hmm. all this stuff to spread information. So, yeah, it is a bit nicer, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Especially, I think there's like, you know, there's the circles of super mm -hmm. players and stuff. Who it's like some, every Katsui know. player is probably going to like familiar with the player name uh, Moglar. So that's awesome. Moglar mm -hmm. our dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, shout out to Moglar. <laughs> yep, shout outs to Moglar, shout outs to Kayar, <laughs> shout outs to um everyone, I think. <laughs> For sure. Well, let's uh get this show on the road here and why and uh enjoy this next run from Koizumi, the world record of Daytona mm -hmm. Twin B. Wow. <clears throat> Alright, I'll start us off from yep. zero. Or from three to to go, three, two, one, go. Yeah, if you're watching uh, his gameplay, uh, his movement is actually even more precise than uh, myself. He's been playing the game more than like five years at this point. So Man. yeah, he's been he's been playing this game like quite for a long time. That's a long time. Yeah, as I you mean, can see, he he just he just grabs the power up like really super fast like even faster than I, uh, myself like he pretty much knows the game at this point and obvious difference is that, that he doesn't he doesn't grab white bell because trying to get the extra um 10, points by grabbing extra yellow bell so in this video he's not gonna missing out the bells um yeah so you're gonna be seeing like even more awesome replays from this one does he have a button for non-auto as well as auto then or is it just what is he is his shot all odd he must because i mean he has yeah, to charge he, yeah he's gonna have three buttons there like one for a non-automatic button and then one for the automatic button so he's gonna have the separate buttons to uh using automatic fire and then charge shot time to time yeah and that's like because and well, then, like yeah. to clarify too, like the game centers will often have the auto fire stuff set up for you, mm -hmm. and that's like not really uh, uncommon for those yeah, who don't know. Depending on the game center, like yeah, some depending. of the game center is like very much, they don't really know much about like how to set up a thing, so they just gotta find the right the right place. Mm -hmm. But Daytona is a very famous place, so they're gonna have all the options available to you very nice mm -hmm. I but, think I heard uh, one of the Japanese um, player uh, he went to the one of the ga uh, visit the game center and then they have the Gradius 3 but that one didn't have automatic fire at all so they're like nope no thank you oh man <laughs> Gradius games without auto fire it's like I guess I'll take laser then because <laughs> laser is <laughs> like your uh, your free auto fire well at least first Gradius game, that's that's how it does, but then yeah. imagine, imagine yourself playing Gradius 3 without having an automatic fire. You're gonna be playing like more than an hour and two hours, and then if you're good enough, you, you'll be playing like five hours of the game and then just keep on mashing a button. That's, that's insane. Yeah, that's just gonna be feel too painful. So yeah, It's impressive, um, but I mean, also like, you know, exceedingly tedious. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 
you're risk you're risking a hurt so bad. And <laughs> never, yeah, and you might even risk injury at, at that at like five hours. Five hours of mashing button. Especially um Gradius 3, there's a ton of enemy coming at you, even from the start, so that's that's the one thing. I think the Detana Twin B specifically, you don't really have to too much worry about the automatic fire kind of thing. Because first off you have a charge shot, but one thing um you can um notice is that the the enemy formation like comes up to the there, there's kind of a like, little bit of a break time. Uh, when enemy showing up kind of thing. So you can kind of take a break, um, you know, not to, you know, spam the button like every second. You can yeah. kind of like take a bit of a moment to sort of take a break and then be ready for the um, next enemy formation come up and then take out the enemy kind of thing. Well, and yeah, then, well, yeah, yeah I mean, you have the charge shot too, and that's going to be solving your button mm -hmm. tapping issues as well. So it's yeah, good, de good exactly. design. Mm-hmm. Charges so quickly. It really, like, yeah. I, I find that yeah. to be pretty cool. So yeah, he. I think at this point he got every um, power up except the white bell. So you can tell his firepower isn't particularly that stronger than uh, how I play. But even then, he's still able to take out the enemy very precisely. You can definitely see how like. He's been pretty much very dedicated to this, this game. Well, he also played other games as well, but uh, according to... I actually talked to Koizumi in the other day, and then he said this is one of his favorite game ever played. Cool. Yeah, uh, about also about Koizumi, he also played the um, 1941 by Capcom. Ooh, that's a good game. Yeah, I played that one too. Uh, I didn't really yes. go for the... Like, high score kind of thing. I only play for survival. I found the game actually quite, quite fun. Fun game to play. Oh yeah, that game is... That's my favorite 1940 game. I love that game. So fast paced and mm -hmm. um, exciting to play and has some pretty crazy segments. And yeah, they give you those, those... Uh, mm -hmm. those screen clearing items at just the best times and it's just and your and the full heels. It's just nice. It's just nice to play when you get into it. Mhm. Mm oh, <clears throat> yeah. Basically, he he was used to be the uh, world record record player for the game, but the other player name I think Sniper Kill. He actually took it back. Mm -hmm. And from what I saw, is that the uh, 1941 is actually one of the game that clearing isn't not too bad, but trying to score the game is actually a very challenging game. So that's that's. Yeah, I believe it. So yeah, he Koizumi also been playing a um let's see um the Tana Twin B 1941 uh V5 by Tuaplan. He also I think he's the also uh, world record player in that one. And then he also played one of the Rising game. I I don't remember what's the name of it. Uh, Maho Daisuken. I think it was, but that what that's that's the name of it. Okay, yeah, that is the name of... Yeah, game. he has played that. I think English name was called Sorcerer Striker, I think. Yep. Yeah, correct. Oh, yeah, he, he's the current world out for that one. He also played the um, Twinbee Yahoo. That's basically the, the final Twinbee game. Which I haven't played at all. Uh, I never even had a chance to play that one. By look of it, it actually looks pretty fun though. But yeah. He has, he has like a lot of world record gameplay as well. So yeah, he's taking advantage of the um, automatic fire here. Yeah, just stay right there and then just keep on using an automatic fire. And yeah, usual um kind of bit of a boring stage for this game. But I mean, that's what it is. You still gotta have to pass through this <laughs> some oh. oh okay. Every game has a section like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. 
Isn't it true though? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the um my only complaint about this game. Like, I pretty much like like everything about this game except earlier stages. It kind of drags the game, and then um, yeah. it, it, it kind of makes me hard to like play like more than three attempts. Like, yeah, I only I can play see this that. game like like three attempts per day, and then if I happen to um play the three attempt. Like, it usually like took like three-ish hours. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot at that point. <laughs> mm-hmm. It makes me kind of a bit exhausting, but you know, that's that's uh, one of the, my major complaints about the game. But other than that, the game itself is still kind of too fun to play. There's no um um slowdown kind of thing. Like if you happen to play Konami game, you you see like ton of like slowdowns kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know, really notice much. Yeah. In, Especially Gradius 3, it's yeah. It, there's a ton of slowdown there, so making you think, "Oh my gosh, this this drags forever." Kind of kind of feel. At least this game doesn't have that in that sense. Like, yeah, that you is. You move nice. around. Yeah, you move around really um very, very well, and then. It really slowdown can really be a pain when it just it extends the game time, and essentially yeah. just wastes your time. <laughs> exactly, but this game doesn't have any of that at least so when i actually got to play the game it it's still kind of fun like even with the okay so i'm very like consistent with the first loop like i don't really die at all in the first loop but and making me think oh this game is so easy in the first loop and then and i still kind of have like decent amount of fun because of how game feel is pretty amazing to play mm. so it's one of the, those games that they keep you um, moving around and that's I think that's the best part about it. Well, best part yeah. about it. Like in in order to um do the option control, you have to keep on moving. And yeah, I mean, I could see how just the fact you are moving a lot, you know, that does help you gain that skill of just use or rather positioning the tail barrier. So mm -hmm. I, I have to imagine you kind of build that up over the course of all the many runs just from playing the game. Mm hmm For this um, world Looks record tricky. gameplay, you can kind of see how, like, this guy doesn't move around that much, though, because mm. like, he, he pretty much know every single thing about the game, so it looks very controlled. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he the, the dude actually pretty much just, you know, controlling the situation really well without even moving too much, so... I think that's the one thing, a uh, major difference between me and um, this world record player. <clears throat> I think for some people, they may have a highly higher tolerance to enjoy a game still when they know it like this deeply. It's like, mm -hmm. it can, I think for some people it might get boring at this point. When yeah. They, when they kind of know everything and they know where to go and there's no danger. But, uh... Yeah. I think there's also just people that can just enjoy the game still, because it's just like, yeah, the backgrounds are nice, the music's nice, and generally, you know, you're just still having fun at the end of the day. Yeah. Kind of depends on the on uh, like your tastes and all every yeah. all that. <laughs> yeah, I think I have very specific tastes in Shmup. Probably gonna say for any, anyone else too, but. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm also very specific about games too. <laughs> I mean, that's what I always tell people who like want to get into shmups. Like, you have to try a lot of different ones to really find that yeah. one that's you're gonna want to play a lot of. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people want to get better, but it's hard for them to stick to one. I would just say, let's just try them all. Yeah, try them all, and then find the one that clicks for you. Kind they're, of thing. they're they're only gonna take like 30 minutes each, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big time commitment to just see what's out there. Also, some of the game, like, you, 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 you'll you probably think that, uh, oh, I don't like this game by first impression, but later on it kind of grows on you, so that happens mm, to true. some people as well. So, you, you'll you never know. Just keep on trying the game uh, as much as you can, and then eventually you'll, you'll find something that um, clicks for you. All right, so this is the still first loop of the um, four stage, but then four stages still have like ton of bells, so 
you want to learn how to um, maneuver bells here. So, and then you'll see like um, Koizumi doing very well of just uh, maneuvering bells, and wow, just keep on taking out enemies without much of an issue. Just like yeah, the this... perfect charge shot to take out those yellow mm -hmm. globs of enemies. Just one charge shot. That's all he mm -hmm. needs. <laughs> yep, yep. Very precise. And then a uh, bunch of uh, these enemies coming at you and then keep on able to use quick charge shot and take out everything and then just get the bonus score and then... Oh yeah, he actually uh, shot the extra shot because he wanted to skip out the blue bell. Uh, just like, just so he be able to not to uh, get the black bell or any other bell color uh, in any time. So that's the one trick that you can definitely uh, utilize. Oh yeah, that charge shot has a ton of range too. So even if your enemy is behind you, you can just use the charge shot behind and then it'll, it'll still take out the enemies. Oh, nice, nice. So wait a sec, so you're saying about the avoiding the black bell, you say you'd let it drop? Or hmm? I, I didn't quite I didn't quite understand what you meant about the skipping the bell. Uh, the... Basically, uh, like I explained, uh, this game bell cycles uh, goes through the... Um, how to explain this? Uh, so, you know how the bell color order goes like white, blue, green, Red, purple, then black, right? So, if you actually happen to see blue bell, I mean, if you get the, all the power up, you're not gonna be seeing red and then the purple, right? Right. So, if you actually um, skip out the blue, then you're basically um, not gonna see the red and green anytime soon. So, oh, unless okay, you, okay. Hit, you hit the bell so many times, you're not gonna see black bell like. Oh yeah, yeah. Few, few hits. So for some reason, yeah. I was I was hung up on like having to drop the bell or something. But no, it's just uh, it's just a matter of shooting of the number of times you shot the bells. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, no, that's no matter important. what bell you shoot, it's it's on that cycle. Mhm. Mm gotcha. Okay, yeah. For some reason, that wasn't clicking. Pretty complicated. <laughs> it actually kind of <laughs> took some time to figure this out. So yeah, this is the fifth stage. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous uh, replay, he's gonna trigger the um, special um, hidden uh, bell formation thing, uh, hidden uh, secrets basically. So in order to do that, uh, you have to take out the three ground enemies, and then use every item that's showing up from the these three ground enemies has to be the fruits. If the star or the green bee shows up, then uh, the hidden uh, hidden uh, bell secret it will not um, trigger. Okay. Yeah. How, so you so gonna be is it random a, or how? It's a random. It's oh, a bit okay. of a randomish. Oh. So okay. if you happen to get a star from the uh, ground enemy, then you're not gonna get it. So. Is it like you have to get a certain number of the fruits to appear? Uh, you you're gonna be seeing it. Okay. Soon. So yeah, there's gonna okay. be like three ground enemies. And then you take them out, all of them has to be the fruits. Okay, only three of them. Okay, that seems good odds. Yeah. yeah. So, you, not right now, but you're gonna be seeing it soon. Um, okay. Yeah, just keep on taking out the dishes. Yeah, some. I think some people trying to figure this out, but I wasn't able to do it. So, I'm gonna just, you know, let people know that this secret is... Yeah, yeah, this, this part right here. He take out the, this grand enemy, and then uh, he didn't grab the fruits right off the bat. But he grabbed the fruit as soon as he took out the rice ball formation. That's how you do it. Oh shit, okay. That happened really quick. Yeah, yeah it happened really too quick, but that's the idea. The idea is that you take out the three uh, ground enemies, and then don't grab the fruit just yet, but grab the fruit right after you take out the uh, rice ball looking enemies. You have to take out those enemies? Yeah. Okay. You have to take out these rice ball looking thing, then grab all of them as soon as you do it. And then it's just like the bells just appear. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty Bells cool. appear and then the dish enemy also appears at the same time. Nice. Okay, so yeah, usual fifth boss. 
Wow, he's he's doing this um Yeah, it looks like he's like looking like he's taking a risk kind of thing, but he's he's being safe at the same time. The movement is always so, kind of random on this one, like, like you said. Yeah, the movement is kind of random. Okay. But then your um, this bullet thing is well, kind of consistent. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say like super consistent, but at least you 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 saw it's coming. So yeah, you can see he just keep on just shooting the blue orbs with just the scoring kind of thing. Oh, you really can see how big that charge shot is from the back. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So yeah, even if it's coming behind you, you can just take advantage of the uh, charge shot. And then just use also use the tail barrier if the charge shot didn't work out. So let's see how much point he gets from here. Yeah, keep on getting 50 points, 50 points. Timeout? Yeah, well not timeout, but he probably just gonna destroy it on... Uh, because he had to, probably. I I'm not too sure like how long it'll take, but from what I remember, it didn't took that long. Okay. Yeah, it's not like um Snow Snow Brothers. Uh, <laughs> like it takes like almost forever to um time is the it, thing out. Is it really just uh <clears throat> too small of amount of points to bother doing it till the end? I'm wondering why he doesn't do it till the end. Yeah. It's because it's a it's a very small point. Yeah, it's like, like one bell would make up the whole timeout. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I think, theoretically speaking, um, so far the world record uh, score is like 4.72 million points. And I think that's the best points they can probably ever get. Because, um, well, the, bell, the bells are pretty much fixed. And then if you grab every bell, then you're probably just going to get the... Um, 4.5, 4 4.6 kind of okay. kind of points, and then you grab an extra point by taking out every enemy's formation, yep. and then grabbing fruits, okay. and then these milking a boss. That's pretty much all about it. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward, but getting all those enemies destroyed in the second loop's got to be some tough shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, theoretically speaking, I think. 4.72 uh, 4 million points are the, the best possible points at this point. I see. Maybe I could be wrong. Some 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 maybe just probably just grind this game again and then probably able to get what like 4.73 I think. Unless yeah, there's probably. more like hidden bell stuff. Yeah. If, mean, if there's more discovery kind of thing. But so far yeah this is like the best point you can I, possibly I'd have to imagine game. some people like just went into MAME and were like just save stating all, all the different like little fruit spots to see if a hidden bell formation would appear. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. I would do if I was like looking for them. Yeah. I mean, I could see how it'd just be like one spot just because they want to have a secret. But I could also see that that being a reason that there would be more secrets. So it does yeah. make you wonder. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of these shmups do have secrets that still get discovered. It's, I mean, yeah, I still remember. Um, nuts. I watched the um one of the Tatsujin O gameplay. Um, there's one of the secrets that you can kind of do in the game, and then I, I was like, wow, you can do with that. Wow, that, that that's pretty much surprising to me. It only so, yeah. took 30 years. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Figure out this one thing. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely giving me a new perspective on this game. I mean, the, the stages are really nice and varied, and a lot of enemy types, and, uh, you know, just a lot to like, or not much to dislike, it seems. Yeah, also, if you actually take a look at SE, um, what's that all? Yeah, a lot of, like I said, a lot of Konami game is very much infinite loop. 
So if you don't like the idea of just keep on playing the game too long kind of thing, mm, this yeah. is one of the day game that you can definitely get into. Um, so this game, if you finish the two book kind of thing, uh, it it takes fifty four minute kind of ish mm. long. I mean, it's, yeah. it is still kind of long mm. for the um probably the other uh, bullet of bullet hell shmups. But for the Konami standard, it's actually pretty one of the shorter ones. Um, I think the shortest tool game to clear in Konami standard is probably the Salamander 2. I think yeah. that one took like 30 minute-ish to actually tool the game. But the other Konami games, like something like Zezex, and then Parodius Da, and then Trigon, all of these games <laughs> take like, like an hour. <laughs> yeah, all these games take like more than an hour. So this game is sort of like sort of in a sweet spot, uh, at least in my opinion, though. But yeah, it kind of hit the sweet spot for me. Like pretty much, not not too long, but not too short. Just able to just keep on playing without worrying about anything. But then that means, of course, you still have to learn the game. But that's the only um, hurdle for me about the game. But other than that, once I learned the game, it's just it feels kind of comfy to just play the game on the when when playing the first loop it doesn't it doesn't really you know go too harsh from the start so the game still kind of feel like gradually gets difficult yeah So yeah, this is the almost the end of the first loop by Koizumi, and yeah, strategy probably not gonna be so different from me. He's gonna probably just use the charge shot and then just destroy this final boss without much of an issue. Actually, never mind. I <laughs> I lied. I was wrong. He he used charge shot, but he also used regular shots at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, he. He killed his boss even faster than mine, but I mean, I try to do that, but it's a bit little more trickier to just shoot him in with the, just a regular shot. It's actually a lot trickier than it looks. So I just basically just keep on using charge shot and just be safe about it. That's a cool looking castle. I can't quite pinpoint what it makes me think of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it reminds me of something too, but I still cannot tell. Um, um what, where where did that come from? Kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah. This, this game makes me feel like somewhat deja vu ish feel. Like it's like every time I hear the music, every time I looking at this graphic, it makes me think. Um, I think I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. Did I kind of feel? Oh, uh, I know a lot of people. Well, I think so too. That you know, the Twin Beak aesthetic is kind of like Studio Ghibli style stuff, like Castle in the Sky. You have a lot of that, like floating continents mm -hmm. type type stuff, and that's always floating pretty, island. Yeah, that's pretty cool in general. Yeah, and then the very clean looking blue sky. Everything looks colorful. Yeah, I mean, the guy who did most of the art graphics of this, um, known as Suzlo Ha, which is oh, yeah, a yeah, yeah. for Shujiro Hamakawa, was previously a animator for Anime R, which is a Osaka-based anime support studio for Sunrise. So he was working on a lot of 1980s Sunrise productions, both mecha and like fantasy oriented before he joined konami as a video game designer in 1989 that actually didn't know that actually oh so i think here's also kind of story about uh the the person i don't know how to pronounce the name either so basically i posted one of the the two all clear achievement on my on my twitter and he basically saw that and then he said congratulations that's awesome <laughs> Yeah, that that was like pretty awesome. Like, I was like, I didn't even know that, that that person even 
use the Twitter or anything. Yeah. It's just that I basically randomly posted it, and then just he's just like, "Oh, oh, dude, congratulations!" And then I'm like, "Oh my gosh, thank you!" <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, like, kind of a cool incentive to, like, post your stuff. I mean, you never know which which of these, like, developers are watching and waiting for yeah. someone to play their game, and they're feeling, like, nostalgic about working on it and stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 he did that, too. Yeah. He, he, t- he talked about the, um, you know, bit of a story about the, when, when, uh, when making video games, and then, yeah, he, he actually mm-hmm. shared some of the stories about it, and then, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I couldn't just- I'm still kind of a bit surprised because this game actually came out during the 1991, which is, at this point is like more than 30 years at this point. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm quite a bit surprised. If the game was actually made in like 2021 or something like that, like developer would, might, might be still like being on active in the social media. And then he probably just gonna able to see, you know, how I play kind of thing. But the game was more than like 30 year old. And then he's still like, be there and then just keep on looking at other people. That's just very impressive. I guess, yeah. I think also part of it too is um, wasn't he involved in like the one indie game like well it's kind of more like a spiritual sequel like with some other people that ended up falling through. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Me neither. It, it was yeah. kind of like Twinbee uh, inspired game, but yeah. then for, because of the funding issue, they pretty much canceled it out or something. Yes, that's what happened. It's I, one person on the team was like in charge of the funds or something like that and withholding payments from other people on the team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a weird situation. Kind of sad. It actually kind of reminds me a lot more of a What's that? Twin B Yahoo game? Yeah. See, that's the kind of like very special about this series. It's like every Twin B game is like very different. It's like it has the um, fundamentals of grabbing a bell kind of thing. But then the uh, the way that the bells work is just too different to each other. Well, and Yahoo yeah. has all those that's weapon true. weapon types. Mm hmm. I guess the. Uh... They're all pretty good, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the punch glove, and then like the, the little bits that fly all around. And I guess the punch glove is actually like pretty good, <laughs> even <laughs> though like I initially wouldn't think it would be. But it just like murders everything. Wasn't that punch glove thing was also in Parodio Star as well? I think so, at least in like, some respect. When you when you actually select like, Twin B during yeah, the, oh, the yeah, Power yeah. Star game? Yeah, you do use it as like a attack. And it like, like I saw one of the two all video for Parody of Da and I've seen many people use Twin B and Takosuke, which is octopus. <laughs> but I I I rarely rarely seen um people playing uh penguin. <laughs> that one seems um really difficult to use. Pentaro gets no respect. <laughs> yeah, it it also has the um similar um option style. Like you have to move around to make the option appear. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's uh, I think that kind of like option is always intri- intriguing me a lot because like, if you compare it to something like Gradius option system, it may not be like super strong option, but it still kind of makes you move around a lot. So it makes a lot more um, enjoyment for me, I think. I really love that. I still like really like the tap back block. That's just cool. Oh, yeah. That's the coolest thing about and then, it to me. And then weaving around the bullet to try to cancel out the uh, every other bullet just as well. That's the one of the techniques that you can utilize. Well, I like, think I've seen him do like straight up like option trail attack on like some of the bigger enemies too. Mm-hmm. That's pretty neat. So yeah, you, he used the charge stuff from there. Oh and man, the ducks. Those... <laughs> These duck <laughs> enemies move super fast. Yeah, that looks really you dangerous. Prob- you probably didn't notice during my replay because I actually used the oh. like charge shot in advance, 
So you only probably gonna see the revenge bullet flying at me, but this guy uses a different strategy from here. So you see that the bunch of dogs flying at you super fast. <laughs> That's this game in nutshell. And then these pink enemy also. What the hell, flying, flying dogs? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this boss isn't particularly that different either. Well, I think the scariest part of the, the second loop boss is these cabbage because yeah, they can shoot out revenge bullet in a, this short um, yeah range of this. Um... Yeah, also these these um, tank enemy also shoot shoot out the revenge bullet as well. So. You actually need to move around this time. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what uh, the max rank or highest rank looks like. Like, how how, how bad does it get? Man. Mm, basically, I don't think as for bullet wise, won't be that much different. I think the bullet speed is gonna be faster though, but. Um, in terms of amount of revenge bullet, it's probably not going to be that much. But biggest difference would be the enemy movement speed is going to be super fast. Like, okay. you're probably going to notice that. Really? Uh, if you actually equip the green bee during the 2-3 two, two, stages, the enemy moves a lot faster. And then that basically makes your routes screws up even more. Because oh, man. You, yeah, you need to able to shoot out the enemies. And to do that, the enemy needs to be like a bit slower. Could you? But then, could, well, could you get more formations to appear if they're coming out faster? I wonder. It. I don't think there's a more extra enemy by um, jacking up the rank. That would but be kind of cool. I'm not too sure about this, but from what I can see, it is that the um, the enemy moves super fast. Yeah. So it's pretty much very impractical to use the charge shot to take out everything because the enemy just comes out super fast so sometimes the charge shot probably not gonna be enough i just noticed <laughs> in that end of screen uh picture you can see the glove attached to the ship behind uh Windby. it's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this is the third stage of the second loop and then yeah just like my strategy he doesn't equip any um Wimby at all because you know you want to definitely want to manage manage the rank okay to be able to survive and then able to grab the bell um, without much of an issue yeah this part is a bit tricky but you can definitely uh, use this trick to able to um, be safe uh, from a revenge, revenge bullet mm. Yeah, these strawberry-looking enemies. <laughs> yeah, you have to know that they're they're coming. So. So I think the um, one of the tricky part about this stage is that the um, there's the um, pink-looking thing, the pink-looking um jellyfish coming at you. Yeah, this enemy. So this enemy, sometimes coming uh comes from the other uh, like other screen sometimes like so you have to be very yeah. careful um not to be in the corner too much gotcha yeah queen bee actually raises the rank but then if you're um equip the queen bee during the first loop it really doesn't matter so you can definitely equip queen bee during the first loop at least so generally my when when um when you're going for the two loop clear kind of thing uh, I would say just equip the Green Bee during the first loop, and then abandon him in the uh, start of the uh, second loop. Because yeah, like I said, um, if you actually got to the second loop, your your power ups will always gonna be remains the same. So yeah, if you happen to equip Green Bee, he will still gonna be uh, stay with you. So you can just abandon him in a, in a purpose, and then just manage rank from there. So yeah, so back to this this stage, you can see how this pink jellyfish looking thing like oh. flying on the, at the right, left screen like randomly. 
Yeah, this happens like pretty randomly, so oh, some fancy you have to. Movement. Yeah. So you have to. You don't want to be in the like corner of the screen too often. Like yeah. sometimes I go to the corner of the screen, and then that that pink looking jellyfish just hit me right off the bat, and just I lost life, and I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> My run's over, and then just. Start, start the game all over from the start. Ooh, using the tiny charges. Yep. <coughs> this one is also kind of tricky to do, do it, do it. Like, you have to kind of practice a ton of time to be able to do this. Yeah, like which... hard. Yeah. I usually just to use full, full charge shot to take out. It took a little more time, but it's still more safer. Oh yeah, this part is the, pretty much the most nightmarish stage i mean yeah because these green looking thing coming at you and then this tank enemy keep on coming at you damn oh oh the and wiggles then, <laughs> and then he still might be able to just block out every bullet this is like a very impressive the swiggles wiggles this is what i'm talking about you can just wiggle around and then just sort of block the um projectiles yeah, he's doing like a that like kind of like a zigzag back motion to like kind of bide time a little bit. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Except, yeah, you still kind of need to be, be careful to do it. Like, if you just do it like, um, randomly, you you'll still be able to gonna get hit by the bullet. So you have to kind of, um, yeah, you have to be very careful doing it. So, uh, Emperor Ying, yeah, this is the auto fire world record. So it has a custom button for auto as well as a man as well as a non auto button usable. So my replay doesn't doesn't use the auto fire. So so mine is pretty much a non auto fire category. Uh, this replay video is very mm. much um, yeah, uh, auto fire setting kind of thing. The game itself doesn't have any um, built-in um, auto fire thing, like kind of like Tatsujin O. So you have to kind of uh, need to install the um, auto fire mechanics to the PCB, and that's generally how uh, most Konami games go. They a lot of their game doesn't have the um, um, auto fire uh, from the get go, so they actually have this separate hardware that enables the um, auto fire. It is kind of strange, but yeah. You'd think they'd, you know, want, or, you know, it'd be good to have auto fire available when. I wonder if there like, is a uh, short charge auto macro some use? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. But then, it, when you're using a, a, like, short charge shot, there's a specific rhythm to it. So you can pretty much, um,. Do a short charge shot pretty quickly if you yeah. actually get the rhythms down to it. Also, since this all this game also had the shot limit thing, so if you actually use the short charge shot uh, at the top of the screen, you can um actually use like quick charge shot even more uh, faster okay. actually. Very nice. usual old school video game with shot limits if you're close to the um, very edge of the screen um yeah you can shoot things a lot faster but if you're on the like far side of the um other screen then your shot speed will probably be gonna lower <laughs> so yeah that's the end of the 2-4 and then 2-5 is coming up and let's see how he deal with this pink stingery formation yep bunch of dishes coming at him but still no problem like again he doesn't have a white belt with him and then still able to take out these enemy with no issue just yeah. impressed me a lot yeah you see from there he take out these enemies without any issues the wow. wiggles okay. Wiggles. Yeah, he's able to preemptively clear a lot of those strains before he gets boxed in. So, you remember how I did from this segment? I used the tap dodges too, just completely ignoring out these enemies. But this guy just go out of the way, just take out all of them. 
and then still be able to protect himself from a revenge bullet. Wow. <laughs> and he'd still be top of the screen. Holy Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so aggressive. Yep. If only you got a score from like canceling bullets. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That that would be that would be actually really <laughs> dope. But you know, it's a it's a game from um, 1991. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People didn't really thought of it back then. I, I mean, that's the one thing I kind of feel sad about this game. It's like I don't. Even though the game is definitely my favorite game I ever get to play, but the game isn't really perfect. But I kind of so. I kind of wish there's another game that you can actually use Tail Barrier to um, erase the bullet and at the same time you can get a grab a score from it. I wish there's more games like that, but apparently this kind of style never really came back at all. Maybe uh, Death Smiles mm -hmm. I think has some option familiars that pretty much functions like that. Like you move back oh, yeah. and like the option goes forward and that type of deal and that has a lot of like bullet absorption. Maybe that could be your thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably another, at least something similar that yeah. we can think of. But I don't think I've seen any game that, that like the, the the entire tail tail barrier mechanic come back to the um like yeah any indie game or some sort. I think the um yeah. for Gradius three, there's a one particular power up uh, weapon configuration that I, I actually really like. Uh, it was called Snake Option. The Snake Option, I really, really liked it, but I don't think there's the, any other Gradius game that actually have the um, Snake Option, other than like the SNES port update and then the Automedius game, is that the, I think. Well, Is that Snake? Is that the one that like whips around? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Awkward. <laughs> I actually really like the option there, so I kind of like hoping to see if if the snake option coming back to uh, something like Gradius Five, but it never came back to it. It's just because it's just really difficult to use for many people. Like, even like Gradius Three player among the Gradius Three player, like I've only seen very few people using it. So, and I, I actually use it for myself too, and I was able to clear the game with snake option. It was wow. just really really fun option to use. But okay, it's just pretty. really unfortunate that that one didn't ever came back. Well, at least the oh. um, one of the indie developer, uh, one of the game called Spulus. I don't know how to say it. Is it Spulus? Spulus? Uh, it, I never figure out pronunciation here, but it's like Spulus. Yeah, but you know what I'm talking <laughs> about, right? Yeah, it's like it's a. Pretty much Recre Gradius fan game and with yeah, the, like just recreations, no mm -hmm. checkpoints really. So the the developer guy is making a sequel for the game, and then he actually, um, it actually gonna feature the snake option for the game, and I, I was like, wow, did he really implement that? Oh my gosh, that that's that's really dope. I'm like so excited for that one. So uh. Yeah. Emperor Ing in chat asks about uh, the arm. How how does the arm come back? And to my knowledge, it's just you have if you lose both arms, the medic comes. But I don't think you talked completely about it. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I gotta talk about this. Okay, so I yeah I'm sorry about this. So basically, if you lose both arms, the ambulance looking thing comes at, comes at you, and if you grab it, you completely restore it. See the issue with it. Is that the um? If you lose the arm again, again, then the um the ambulance heart thing doesn't come back again until you finish the uh, stage. Okay. Oh, so this is the one thing um difference about the um the original Twin B and then the this game. So from um what I remember, the original Twin B, if you got the ambulance back, I mean if you got the um the the restore the arms. And then if you lose the arm again, it doesn't come back at all until you um, lose the life or something. But this game, if you're actually able to defeat the, uh, if you actually um, uh, clear the stage, then you lose the arm again. Then it the heart actually comes to you. So it's it's once per stage. Yeah, I think in the original Twin B, you actually get to use it twice, and then it doesn't come, if I recall correctly. Could be wrong. Oh, so do I, you I, try to get it sure you... back 
ASAP? Is it better to wait? You can do both. Basically, depending on the situation, uh, if you see this icon moving towards you, then um, you basically grab it anytime you want. Just be careful with the enemies uh, uh, overlapping during it. Because sometimes the invincibility frame doesn't work. Like, if you grab right off a bat. It's, I, I, I think it's a bit weird. Like, you you think that you grab the um, the um, heart, then thinking that you're gonna have the in invincible frame for um, taking a hit from the bullets or enemy. But sometimes if you actually grab uh, two, like you grab it, you grab it, but then you get the keep hit by the bullets too early, then you die sometimes. So yeah, at this point, this is a, I think, 2-6 from Koizumi, and then he so far got the 4.2 million points. Speaking of the and ambulance. I, yep. Yeah. Speaking of ambulance, he got it. I don't think he's dropped a belt chain yet, either. Yeah, he didn't lose any <coughs> belt chain. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, this is the very last stage. He's keep on doing... um very well with the blocking the bullets from the his tail barrier and then oh yeah he get the the blue bell from here so i mean he didn't get get it he just basically um making the blue bell showing up and then the skips it just so he can just don't grab the black bell right off the bat in a certain point okay. yeah for this one it's really difficult to um point blank the clouds because there's a bunch of enemy coming at uh, him at this point. Yeah, this one you can definitely um, point blank the clouds. Yeah, he did all of that and then he used specific trick from here. So he doesn't shoot the um the guy and then keep on shooting at the, just the cloud instead. This is actually one of the strategy um, you can definitely use. But I didn't able to get to practice this strategy yet, but I'm probably gonna have to you know, save states and then just trying to get the feel of how to do, do this kind of trick. You know, I was going to say, one thing that annoys me too is when you play this is sometimes the bells will just get in your way from uh, t killing enemies, so... Yeah. I think that's just a matter of, like, learning the stages, though, and avoiding that, would mm -hmm. you say? Yeah. Basically, if, you've, if, you have, if you have too much bell floating around, your shot will pretty much going to block by the bells and then you cannot take it take out the enemy so that's the one thing you have to kind of keep in mind so yeah, one of the tricky part here bunch of pink looking enemies come in at him and then there's gonna be warm looking things coming Ooh. from the side the emergency yeah, wiggle at the end <laughs> <laughs> And he's still be able to wiggle around to try to erase the bullet and still able to get all the bells. I love it. Yeah. So it's... at this point, he got the 4.69 million points. And then, yeah, he's trying to get the, as much point as he can. And so far for this game, uh, I heard there's the, um, about 30-ish people clear this game, but only two of them was able to got uh, 4.7 million points. Oh man. That seemed pretty clean. Yeah. He got the 4. Point million points. I mean, 4.7 million points from here. So if he take out this guy, he's gonna get the um, extra... Um, 20,000 points, so that's all gonna make uh, 4.72 million points. Yep. Yeah, good stuff. There you have it. That was like, and really here goes the, um, yeah. Didn't really see him miss game. many enemies. I mean, I, I wasn't like trying to look for any he missed, but it must have been just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow. So meticulous. <laughs> So yeah, that's the end of the um, world record gameplay by Koizumi. Very impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
always amazing to see world record runs like this, just how well thought out everything is from start to finish. I hope more people get into this game. It's actually one of those games that uh, very few people knows it, and then few people tried the game for themselves, and then it did, did the game didn't really click for them, and it just gave up kind of thing. I feel kind of a little sad from there. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes yeah, it, it it do be like that for certain games. Well, mm-hmm. sometimes too, you just need like ideas of like how to understand the game to kind of cook a little bit before giving you another series attempt like True. either months later or years and then you end up enjoying it that's pretty true too <clears throat> did the uh i one up icons always like pump their fists like that what, what, what was that like the little uh, uh your little one ups in the top left were like pumping their fists huh did they just do that at the ending to like cheer you on? Ah, uh, you ever notice that? Not, <laughs> I didn't notice any of that actually. Yeah, they I like. I think they do that throughout the game. Oh, throughout the whole game. Okay. The difficulty of the game definitely scares the folks. Yeah, that's that that's definitely true. But they made it look so easy. <laughs> 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 that's oh, any shmup that. actually. It's like, oh, yeah, the game looks easy. I'm going to play this game for myself and be the first international player to tool this game. And... <laughs> Oops. Yeah, no, 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 thanks. <laughs> Until you need those wiggles, I don't know. Better, better work yep, on your wiggles. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the windshield wipers. Yep, that's a, that's a technique that you're going to be, um, needs to be familiar with. I think it looks fun to do that. It is. It actually even really actually fun. It's like you you get to do a ton of movement to able to um, take out the bullets. That that idea alone to me is actually one of the what's that called? Um, fascinating thing ever in a video mm-hmm. game. <laughs> I really like that mechanic. Yeah, it's some very cool movement tech there. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like it. The game basically, um, like encouraging you to move around a little more instead of trying to figure out the route for, uh, being a specific spot to dodging the bullet kind of thing. Yeah, in almost some ways, it kind of reminds me of some of the more advanced tech of like Cyvaria, where you have to kind of understand certain ways to manipulate your movement to get optimal grazing patterns and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, Siberia. Oh, I just remember that game. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's that's another game that I can kind of say pretty similar style to. Yeah, <laughs> definitely from revision onwards, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I... this is like a two hours and 17 minute upstream, huh? <laughs> Yeah, good stuff. It was it was good to watch yeah. both uh, runs, and I think we had some good stuff to say. And I think uh, yeah, you did a good job on the commentary, talking about uh, yeah. just the various things you need to do to be successful, and some of the things to watch out for. And yeah, I mean, I'm convinced it's worth checking out again. Like other Please people, I got game. I got you know, <laughs> I didn't take it too seriously but yeah it's just a really solid game i mean all around i gotta say yeah please play this game (laughs) (laughs) i want to see more more players to get into this game and then hopefully see more um 2-0 clears because from what i know um other than the uh japanese country i have never seen anyone uh to this game uh besides the um few of the japanese people so Mm. yeah just yeah, we that's gotta true. Get worldwide coverage, we need it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I actually submit this uh the Tana Twin run because there was no real info about the game. And then cool. turns out yeah, I was the only one kind of actively playing the game. So yeah, I just need to share the love of this game and then I think Koizumi gonna proud of me for doing it. I mean he already is. He just keep on saying that um Thank you for sharing love for this game and then to the world. 
<laughs> That's nice. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, offering to come on because, yeah, this was definitely a fun one and uh, I'm glad we get to talk about it. I love the skill play of this game. I wish I wasn't really that skillful too. I mean, I, I was able to tool the game, but from... I actually keep on watching the high score play for this one. Their, their um, tail barrier movement is just still very look on, on point. I wish I can be like that sometimes. Even though I kind of feel a little burnt out by this this game, so I'm kind of taking a break yeah. from right now. But it's it's if I just keep on watching the game, it's just you know makes me think, wow, this guy movement is so looks clean and just fun to watch. It's always amazing to me just how much just having one at least one other person playing a game that you're playing, and you can just get so many ideas from just just at least just one person playing something yeah. if, if, yeah. if there really is like no other info like you just get so much from just that alone it's pretty insane exactly so you probably could see maybe some advanced wiggles from some other people <laughs> 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 or uh, more i want to i want to I, I really is i think there's another secret somewhere there's got to be yeah. not just one you know that's that's why more people need to get into this game. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean it's got a plenty of ports and stuff, even on uh, modern platforms on PS4 and Switch. I, I guess those are the are those arcade archives releases. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, okay. I think I need to mention this too. Yeah, uh, yeah. So if you're trying to play this game, I would definitely gonna recommend to play it on a PS4 arcade archives because if you're playing it on Mame um, or Mame, you guys, how do you say it? Yeah, that's yeah, how it goes. Basically. Mame runs too fast. Damn. Like the scrolling speed is like kind of faster than the original PCB. So yeah, it feels gonna be very different if you're comparing it. If you want to try to That's play it, to like yeah. If you're trying to want to play as like closer to the arcades, I would definitely recommend to play on a arcade archive version. That's like the closest one. Cool. Very good, very good. And then, uh, if you got a, or you, if you have any comments about the PS One or Saturn versions, you, you ever tried those? Uh, I actually never tried uh, the that that version. I okay. think there's a slight difference in the graphics from what I've seen, but or the yeah. music. Other than that, the game itself, I never really noticed anything. I didn't get to play the game. I actually watched the video. So by watching a video, I didn't notice anything too much because most of the video is just a one loop gameplay yeah. so yeah yeah like, i couldn't really t tell anything too much about it um yeah i think the some of the games are actually plays better on the arcade archives i think the gradius 3 is kind of same in that regard because on the main the game runs kind of too fast really? so yeah hmm. it's like i actually played gradius 3 on the both arcade archives and the, the original pcb for myself so playing it on MAME is actually makes, makes me feel too fast compared to the PCB. So if you want to yeah. play something like very closer to the you know original arcade board experience, I would definitely gonna recommend the uh, arcade archive version for that one specifically. It's nice that uh, some of those arcade archives are going the extra attention to detail there when they could easily ignore that just because most people aren't gonna notice. <laughs> But they know yeah. that they're making them yeah. for, like, you know, the actual players, which is nice. At least, at yeah. least for they, some of those places. They recently also inviting out the um the players, like, players, and then to test out the game. That's nice. actually what they did with the Gradius 3 as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy uh, how much meme can actually be, you know, inaccurate in a lot of cases. So you really do want to <clears throat> kind of do your research at times. Yeah. Well, I don't think we got ain't got anything else here. So yeah, thanks again once again, Ref Key, for coming on. That was awesome. Thank you for inv inviting me. Uh, I could I I was kind of feel a little nervous <laughs> when doing this because um English definitely English not is not the native languages for me so. Yeah, it was a bit nervous, but you know, it was definitely fun to doing it, and yeah, I, I'm glad that I, I was able to um, showcase the um, the Tana Twin B and then able to explain how this game kind of works. 
and hopefully more people got into this game. I think people will appreciate it for sure. And it's yeah. and besides, it's Twin B. I mean, everybody loves Twin B. <laughs> this might be this might be the uh, act the three a three thousand viewer. <laughs> anyway, and uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Maximo. I was just gonna say, really good commentary, honestly. Like, no, yeah, definitely. You know this game in and out, and can you know really explain some of these really intricate strats in detail. And I think that's kind of what people are looking for in these episodes. So, you know, thanks for sharing that with us. Very good. We'll wrap it up here. That was episode 189 on Daytona Twin B. We'll have to see you guys uh, on the next next episode. So till then, we'll see you. Le- see you next time. See you, see you next game. <laughs>